Hi, my name is Kate Muma, and I am the Associate Conservator of Modern and Contemporary Art at the Denver Art Museum. Part of my job is the preservation of the museum's electronic media collections, so things like video art, software-based art, and born digital artworks of other types. I'm here today to talk with you about preservation of your own digital collections, those treasured home movies, photographs, and documents that you hope to hang on to and access for years to come. Now, videotapes and digital files are more vulnerable to loss than traditional printed materials in a number of ways. Um, so the carriers and the storage devices themselves are subject to rather quick deterioration. Videotapes experience something called sticky shed, where a layer of the tape becomes sticky and then the information layer actually peels off the rest of the tape and the information is lost. Disks and hard drives also can fail mechanically or they can also degrade leading to data corruption, which is often called bit rot. Also, videotapes and files are subject to obsolescence, and this is when the hardware or the software needed to access the object is no longer available or supported. Luckily, there are things we can do to battle these processes. Now, the first thing is to think about all the content that you want to preserve and where it might be. A lot of it is probably on your computer hard drive, but it could also be in places like videotapes, CDs and DVDs, USB drives, your phone, and also even social media sites. Um, did you know you can download all of your content from Facebook? Once you've identified everything, you want to bring it together in one place. Um, this would be, usually be your computer hard drive. Now, videotapes are a bit of a special case. Um, videotapes need to be transferred to a digital file format. Um, there are vendors out there who can help you with this, um, both locally and nationally. One local option is the Digital Media Services Department at CU Boulder Libraries, and they will do transfers for you for a fee. Now, when you're looking at vendors, uh, you want to find one that's reputable, and you want to make sure that they can provide you with a digital file and not a DVD. Um, you also want to ask them to provide you with the highest quality digital file that they can, but know that these files can be very large. For those of you who are particularly intrepid, you could consider doing the transfer yourself. Um, you would need the right equipment and knowledge, and you can research this online. One local resource is uh, Denver Public Library. They have a VHS transfer station um, that you can use by reservation. Now know that the video transfer process does have some risks. Um, video playback decks can damage tapes, uh, particularly if the deck is not well maintained or if the tape is very old. So if you have a tape that's particularly valuable or just really important to you, I'd recommend you find a reputable vendor to work with and really do your homework on that. Now, once you have all of your files together in one place, it's time to think about organization. A really great way to organize files is to use descriptive file names that give an indication of what the file represents. Um, you want to make sure that your file names don't get too long, though, and you should avoid using special characters and spaces. You can use underscores instead. Another way to organize files that might be a little bit more manageable, but is maybe not quite as effective, um, is to use folders, which are often called directories. Um, when you name your folders, use the same conventions you would for your files, um, and also avoid nesting too many folders within one another. Last but not least, let's talk about storage. Storage is probably the most important thing you can do to preserve your files. Um, and redundancy is really the name of the game. You want to follow the principles of 3, 2, 1. So keep three copies of all of your files, use two different type of, types of storage devices, and keep one copy in a different location. So one way you could manage this would be to keep one copy on your computer hard drive, one on an external hard drive in your home, and one on a cloud storage uh, service online. Now you can research the different cloud storage providers um, and their features and costs. If cloud storage doesn't seem like it's for you, another way to go would be to keep one copy on your computer hard drive, one copy on an external hard drive in your home, and then one copy on an external hard drive that you keep somewhere else, like your office or a safe deposit box or a friend's home, for instance. That way, if you have a natural disaster at your home, a fire or a flood, and you lose your copies at home, uh, there will be another copy out there. There is some maintenance involved with storage. You want to keep your external hard drives in a safe place, 
away from temperature extremes, dust, moisture, pests, and keep your hard drives away from magnets because magnets can corrupt the data. You also want to check on your files periodically, so once a year, um, open all your devices and open a range of files and file types and make sure everything is working. You'll want to plan to replace your hard drives every five to seven years, or of course sooner if, if one fails in the meantime. One last thing you could think of doing is keep a list of the different file types that are in your archive. And that way, if you hear on the news that a, a file format is becoming obsolete, you can check to see if you have it and then make plans to convert those files to a different supported file type. Now, those are the basics of uh, digital preservation for your personal collections. Um, there's a lot more information online if you want to take a deeper dive, but these steps will take you a long way in keeping your digital files for years to come. Happy archiving!